Hello. So it's telling me that my bit rate is really low. But anyway, so if it if this gets really crappy and choppy or something, then just let me know in the chat window. Looks okay. Cool. So um, let's have a look. So I been going through my sketchbooks oh, wait a sec um. that's why my display is chopping I'm trying to scream at 4k Yay, key changes, that's better. So um, I've been going over some sketchbooks uh, for various reasons, and I found this image um, from way, way back when. Let's just maximize it a bit. So this is like some crappy thumbnail I did, like, uh, 20 years ago, 20 years ago or something. Um, so I quite, but I quite like the shape. Um, I think it's interesting the way it kind of rears up a bit. Um, so I thought we could try that and I can see, I can see, and it's a good chance to do like a, a nice clean bit of subdivision modeling. So I thought we'd just sort of get on with that really. Hey Jason, good to hear from you. <laughs> well, hopefully now I've dropped the uh, the resolution, things might improve. Um, I don't know why it's so choppy. Might be my internet connection. Right. So let's let's. I didn't do this last time. Why is modeling on the fly but I think I will start with um, let's do this in the side window a, a modeling plane just so it's right in max and everything's to scale so let's pick some sizes like uh, how big is it gonna be eight eight meters eight meters And then we're going to get make a material. Standard material will be fine. Find my image. Oops, not that one. I can drag and drop my my image onto that map there, and then just assign this to the object. And make it visible. It's all a bit squished. Um, so let's use the proper tool to do this. So just get a UV map. Where's it gone? Down here. Bitmap fit. Find the image that I just played with. Oh, where's it gone? Cut paste that path in there. It's Uh, 
vanished. Oh, has it vanished? There it is, open. That's a bit of that, and we'll do bitmap fit, and it's done a bitmap fit. So that's the um, that's the correct aspect ratio, and I'm just going to expand. Let's just maybe use the gizmo to shrink that down. And now we've got my drop ship the right scale. So this is somewhat somewhat drawn in perspective. There we go. So I'm just going to sort of compensate for that. And get on with it. Right, so let's have a look. Top. Just going to move this just back. Oops, not that way. Move the object back. away from the grid line so I can model on the center and I need to get rid of my viewport background because it's flickering. Right, we're set up and ready to go. Turn the grid off. Have a little think. And let's get going. Okay, so. The multiple ways of starting off. I could, Let's start with Plane out X to make it invisible and F4 to show the grid lines. Dial the grid lines down on that plane so they don't distract me, and off we go. Right, so we got two major lines down the ship. So let's just model the bare minimum, first of all. I want to be as lazy as possible, really, <laughs> when I'm modelling, because I really need to get it done faster. So, I mean, I'm really trying to be conscious of what the end result is going to be. And in this case, if I'm just going to do a bit of art with it, um, which I think is the objective, I'm doing art for this role-playing game, then uh, I don't want to get too hung up on things, because in the end I need to take it into Photoshop and make it look cool. Um, so that's the arc of it. I'm trying to, so just keep firing questions away as you think of them or um, just if you have any comments as I'm going like what you think of it. Then I can start shaping the basic form. Uh, I'm going to smooth that properties smooth the bottom of it, smooth selected, just to get a bit of lighting structure. So in my, in my mind, I don't have any references, but like there were these early um, sort of flying wing designs done by NASA. Um, see if I can get something up. Like just in terms of and there are very bulbous um, shapes. And I guess that's that's kind of what I'm going for with this. Just with this slightly sharp line at the um, at the interface. And some of this reminds me of a flying boat. So I'm kind of mixing metaphors is at if you will with various aspects of this. So let's add a symmetry modifier now. Oops, not that way. That way. Backspace to remove that. Backspace to remove that. And now turbo smooth. Oops, missed 
Turbo smooth. Hey man, how you doing? And um, we're gonna just quickly turn on separate by smoothing groups and that gives us that nice nice sharp edge around the boundary. So now we've got more edges to play with and I can do some sculpting um, with these edges or I could own, add my own edge loops in to kind of give it some form. But let's try and be minimal about this as much as possible. So when um when I add the turbo smooth, you can see it sucks the silhouette in a bit. So we go from there to there. So I'm just going to go back into my subdivision cage, turn on in result, and just give it a little bit more volume. Uh, and I can either try and drag these things up like that, or I could try and add an extra edge loop around there. And given that I'm trying to keep everything vaguely square, let's add a quick loop with a piconet like that just to kind of give it, stop it sucking in so much. So down here, I want this um, sort of flying boat-esque um, we can find a flying boat. Where's a good one? There we go. See the shape? That kind of thing. They have this uh, interesting bow that kind of shape. So it's almost like um, I'm just cutting off this bit of the shape and gluing a cockpit on top of it. So we're going to need another edge down here to do a bit of shaping. So let's just swift loop something in there. And then we can just drag that center line down a bit. So I'm imagining this line will be sharper um, and I can add another edge loop around the whole shape just to kind of get that. So how am I going to do that? Yeah, let's just swift loop something in. So let's just do swift loop right up here. So you can see that makes when everything's welded back in again, it makes the top edge very sharp. So I'm going to soft. I'm going to keep this sharpness on the bottom edge and then um, soften it on the top. Um, so I'm imagining that there's like a double bow, like a, a curve and then another curve just here. Uh, so that will help when I do this. Yeah, that's better. That's what I wanted. I have no idea what's going to go on back here, but um, it's got on here, it's got this shape on top, so like a cutout or something. Let's just see. you've got any comments because I'm kind of making this up on as I go along if you've got any comments on what you think then feel free to fire away in the chat just want to shape that bit a bit so I need to add another edge loop somewhere swiftly Right, 
let's see how my silhouette's doing. So I've lost lost it somewhat. It's becoming a bit fat. So let's just drag it all back into place so I don't lose track of where I'm going. Get that nose back into shape. Given this is a scrappy sketch, like from my, I want to say my early days. Uh, I quite like it like that. Let's keep it like that. Um, I will make some adjustments later, but I'm going to try and stay faithful to it. Yeah, and that is better. That is a bit better. Right, so now the top silhouette doesn't exist. Um, so I don't really know what's going on with it. Uh, let's have a look at what I've been researching just recently. So I do spend a lot of time in the mornings just browsing through um, the internet. And I've been looking at these fighter shapes, which is really cool. Um, let's zoom in. So th we're not in fighter realm. I think this is another project, but I did like. I really that was a really nice image, just showing how they're spent right now. But what I quite like is yeah this kind of top-down silhouette. So where the that line goes backwards like that, and I think that's what's missing. Uh, more like that sort of top silhouette if we're looking at the back of it so let's see if we can incorporate some of that into this more like this And I think that is pretty close to where I want it to be. What do you guys think? Always tend to go slow with these first shapes, right? So let's just crack on. So now I've got my, my basic shape, let's just glue it all together and then we'll move on to the other parts. So, do need to, um, I think what I'm going to do is let's just, so I want to add a loop in round down here, but I want to keep the size of it, so let's add a swift loop right down. Shrink that selection and just move it up. There we go. And then we can do that. Hide that edge. Bridge it. And then we can make all of that once moving group. Smooth, smooth that. Control I and smooth that. Something like that. Right, so now we're this far, you guys can vote. So I was wondering whether we could like try and get this all the way into Substance Painter or in the live on the live stream. Um, so that will kind of change the emphasis of what I'm doing somewhat into kind of like pre visy kind of prototypey kind of stuff. Um, and you can we can just try and crack that that two Substance Painter workflow really quickly and see if we can get 
the whole thing textured as soon as as soon as I can. Yeah. So do we can I can either try and add in more features, or we can just kind of just kind of block out really fast, like the wings maybe, and then um, and then we'll go to Substance Painter straight away. Or we can do like panel cutting. And like really like do more detailing on this, and we can look at how to kind of refine the model somewhat. That's quite a good shape. Oh yeah, I forgot to save it. Let's save this as something before I crash and lose it, because that always sucks when that happens. Where is it going to go? Spaceships. It's called Flatfish, apparently. That's what I wrote ten years ago. There you go. So Flatfish, it will remain. Um, well, just going to do a little bit more modelling while you guys make up your minds about what's happened next. So we're going to go for Substance Painter or more modelling. This one makes space for some sort of engine. Right, well, I'll, I'll just keep on modelling then while you while we see what's going on. So, more modelling. All right, okay, dude. So I'm going to leave this bit. So let's look at these wings. Actually, let's just do the same method because it's quite nice. Make a plane. Gonna hide that. Out X. You'd like to see the wings? Yeah, the, these vertical wings. Yeah. Right, so the rotation axis is going to be here. So I actually will just drag it into shape, I think, as opposed to rotating it into shape, because I want to preserve that rotation axis. Um, so let's just let's go for it then. Vertical poly. Let's do a swift loop like that. Give it some volume, another swift loop like here. And let's target well on some stuff. And again, symmetry modifier, symmetry. So the neat thing about the plane modeling technique is when I, uh, as long as I get the axis right, it's because I'm pulling everything out from the center, like we get this the symmetry modifier just just does just drop into place, which is quite good. But I'm going to need to add some support loops, otherwise it's going to fall apart. Let's add turbo smooth. Oops, missed. Where has it gone? So that's making that really bulbous. So let's add another point there. Is that going to work? I don't know. So I want to round that off over. So let's just collapse that. There we go. It's a bit more like that's what I was expecting. So let's see how that works. Well, we've got 
so I've got my topology roughly right. It's doing the right things. I just need to support it now. That's a bit hard to see, isn't it? So we've got this bit of edge flow going around here now, the way I've modelled it, and that will pull this shape down. But we've got this corner shape here, and that will kind of tend to make a corner as we go. Just about. It's beginning to take shape. Do a bit more supporting and looping. Uh, you know, normally I, I don't bother with bringing images into Model Around, but I probably should do more of it because it is a lot less stressful. As like, don't have to make silhouette decisions or worry about things drifting off. That's quite quite good. Model and continuous substance. See if we can do both. I've got like forty minutes, so. It may be, well, we could do some UV mapping. Oh, look at that, it's just falling apart. Last bit of supporting loops there and there. That's a bit better. That's holding its shape a bit better. Uh, it's, I don't want to fuss this too much, but anyway, there you go. Yeah, I think substance for the next room would probably be a good idea. Maybe we'll just... How are you guys with UV mapping? Do you do want to look at that a bit here? Or um, it's always a bit of a... UV... You can do it or you can't, I kind of feel. That said, I think the thing to do is actually try the new Substance Auto UV Mapper. So we could just maybe not bother with UV Mapping. That's kind of the future, isn't it? Yeah, let's just try that. So on the next live stream, maybe we'll just look at the, the new tools in Substance Designer. Rather, Substance Painter. Because it's got some shiny new toys, including the decal system they've got which does look quite useful. Right, that's a wing shape. What happens if I collapse those? I'm just going to try it. Collapse. Nah. Just keep it like that. Pointy. Right, let's do some engines. Do I want that shape? I don't know if I want that shape. Oops. Yes, I am working on a a a. a, a oh wait, broken. Yeah, just so you know, I'm working on a role-playing game called Broken Shield um, with a friend of mine, Gobian. It's in our... Will this be a game asset? No, it's a um, it's a tabletop game. It's like um, dice, dice and paper. Uh, so uh, it's not really a game asset in that sense. So it's, I'm more looking at kind of changing my workflows from doing like film and uh, TV work games and film and TV to kind of doing painterly uh, kind of concepty stuff like really fast. So um, that's part of the reason for the live stream is just to try and encourage me to um, 
pull my finger out a bit and finish some stuff. I suppose the fuck, because like when you're doing stuff for film, everybody gets, people just pick the crap out of it. Something like that, maybe. Maybe. Oh, I'm going to leave that. So that kind of connects there, kind of. So I think I'm going to shape pull this back a bit just to make it all feel a bit less. Um, that's, that's it, it's all connects like that. I think in in my head, what the idea was this: like basically, when you're in um, when you're kind of re-entry in re-entry mode, uh, you'd have these big things that sort of fold away, so they don't burn up. And then when you want to go into flight mode, it kind of does this. Um, place right engines right so let's just quickly try some shit with engines so I'm gonna make a spline Drop the countdown to eight. Turbo smooth. So I want to subdivide that some more. So let's just refine it by oh, oh, cut it up. Let's make that a smooth edge. Turn termination down and make don't organize it. So that'll give us that shape. That's better. So what I'm, I'm just gonna try and get this kind of serrated feel for my engine bell. Yeah, like that. So we've got turbo smooth modifier on top, then we can do an edit poly. Right. And we're gonna ring select that and then loop. So we've got all the horizontal radial things. Oh, you made figurines. Figurines are cool. Yeah. So, so Jason, you like a ZBrush man then? It just that that seems to be like the main the main tool for um figure making. Uh extrude Yeah, ZBrush is a, a beast. <laughs> like, there we go. So we've got sort of... ZBrush is definitely a beast. 
I, I keep it's such a demanding master um if you don't practice like every single day oh dude I think you have to fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> like, oh, right, cool. Where do you teach, dude? Uh, oh, you don't have to say, though. I mean, if you don't want to. Um, Uh, what am I doing? I've got lost track. The teaching is a thing, though, man. It's like a big discipline, right? So, I mean, it's hard to kind of do everything. Like, so, it's a, such a massive skill, teaching well. Like, it's difficult to stay on. I mean, like, literally, like, I'm burning hours every day trying to stay on top of all these tools. Right, loop. North Carolina, cool. It's cool that there's digital art in um, high school though, because it's so... Uh, I want to say it's like essential, <laughs> like it's still just a modern way of doing things, isn't it? Control I. So England's still a little bit backwards like that. Right, so I don't know if you're paying attention. So, like, I, that took a bit longer than I intended, but like, let's redo it. So, selected the outer rings, then control I to select the inverse rings. And now I've got two sets of smoothing groups. Like this. So that was kind of like a judicious use of the um, extruding edges to kind of cut in and lathe my... Uh, my lay, so I've gone from that shape to that shape. I'm also an idiot because I should have. Right, I'm going to have to do this. All right. So let's clone this. Control V, copy that. Because I also need my. Um, My inside, which I forgot to do, like a Muppet. I was too busy gassing, not concentrating. Right, so let's just drag all that in. It's not a great way of doing it. No, let's, let's not do that. Let's do it like this. Let's add a shell modifier here. And then bin that edit poly, add another one. Dude, no, it's, it's my, um, it's my, you know, it's just a learning process for me doing this, like uh, uh, talking and, well, no, yeah, I'm used to talking because I teach as well. So I teach at um, degree level, uh, I mean, I say degree level, it's like, it's, I think I've been, it's such a, it's really part of a media course, so they don't spend much time on it, and it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's like high school standard, really, um, stuff. So it's good to see that, because um, it needs, uh, it needs a lot of work to go, to do well at. So let's attach that. But it's, it's a lot of work to make a good course. Uh, especially, um, you know, when it gets really technical and like people are scratching their heads, um, and like certainly Max, it's like if you there's like a few things you you teach it, and if people do one thing out of place, 
everything just falls apart and they get really depressed. Right, so... What's we going to use that then? Let's just have a look. That is smoothing group number two. So let's make all of that smoothing group number two. Yeah. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Right. Let's turbo smooth it again. So, how how is it working during lockdown in the states? Like, are you teaching online? Did I not weld that? Sorry. No. There you go. That's better. Right. So that's our engine nozzle. I guess I guess we'll just do the. Oh, I know what we should use. Oh, just because I'm going to show off. So I've got my little tool. Let's get my my tool out. Okay, Z. Oh, I see you, right? Cool. Um, I've got like slides and stuff to go with some of this. So, um, if you want to direct message me, then uh, we can talk if you want more stuff. Yes, yeah, so I've got my, my all my courses up in, on Google Drive. Um, that's probably something I shouldn't broadcast. But anyway, yeah, so I've got like a secure drive. So you can, we can, I can share some of that with you if you want some extra resources. Right, so that looks kind of cool. Just give it a bit of colour. So it's been almost an hour. So I think I can say that's officially blocked out. Cool. Let's copy that as an instance. Right. So I'm going to attempt to use a substance material on this and, and render it really quickly. Is that a good idea? So let's add some... Uh, let's assign some material IDs. So everything's going to be material ID 1, apart from the top. Which is going to be material ID 2. 
to maybe that stuff. Yeah, I'll do. Okay, so that's going to be material ID 2. So let's just add some. And then this bit, let's make that material ID 3. So let's give it some really quick materials. Display material color. Okay, right, so let's. Uh, let's get my slate material a little bit open because it's going to be easier. So, like, grab that. Let's clone it. Uh, shift, drag, one, two. So let's make this dark tiles. Let's make this light. Uh, let's make that just dark matte. And then we can have one more, which is going to be, whoops, a engine metal. So I'm just going to get like the basic color palette sorted out right now. Uh, so we need a general, we need a multi sub object. some colors so we've got our dark tiles uh, it's a bit of a blue color cast going on my screen I'm not quite sure where that's coming from I want to whack the roughness up on that to something like 0.5. Drop the mat. And then we can add point that at this. And then this at that. Whack the middleness up on that. Give it some roughness right then so let's look at our environment so I'm pressing 8 for my environment I've got this exterior environment I'm going to swap it over to a studio environment from HDR Haven, which I banged on enough, but I will actually let's just do it again. H HDR Haven, HDR Haven, go support them because they do a load of cool stuff. Uh, so these studio lighting things are quite good for spaceships, really. Um, I think like a just sort of faking Star Wars s lighting, like in a studio. So just get some studio lights. So. Um, Let's just grab where's my environment gone. All oh, right, we want a bitmap, general bitmap. Just this one K image. Let me open that. Okay. Right. Let's. 
to a bit of organization before we start rendering. So we want oh, everything to be on a spaceship there. Apart from that, flat fish. Don't get hide the base layer. Uh, I wonder what the. Oh yeah, it's blown up. And that base is super shiny. Let's um, let's see what it, the active shade looks like. This is possibly gonna kill. YouTube, yeah, there we go. So let's go back to eight. And we're gonna add some, let's dial that down to 10, see if we can fix anything. All right, let's turn that off. Use that one. Something like that. This is where where um Max Twenty One is better because the the viewport and background won't blow out so much. It's just a little bit more in, in annoying in um, Max Twenty Twenty. Oh, there we go. Okay, right. So we can see that there's a big fat light source just there. So let's go back to um, just sort of grade some of this into place so that it's feeling a bit better. So now that's interesting. So I mean, just in terms of artistically, let's just make this a bit bigger. So the black on the base of this is just totally merging with the black of uh, the background. And that's not cool artistically, really. Uh, I think I want to lift that slightly. So I could lift it with light, but I might just try lifting this black a bit. Uh, even though I think it's kind of the right color to see what happens where I get a bit of separation. And let's just add a bit of roughness. That's better, cool. So let's think it's definitely hitting my performance a little bit. So let's just try one last trick uh, just while we're here. So I'm not necessarily going to do this like as the final model, but um, so let's just save everything before I try this. Uh, I want to cut a little window area in here so let's make a new material dial that right down to black change reference to black window so this is like super lazy texturing so um, I guess the window wants to be kind of like
sign that material to it. There we go. So it's a nice clean shape. Um, and then um, we can, so I just file save this again, because it's going to be a bit annoying to undo this. But I, um, let's make a compound object. And we are going to do a pro boolean. And we're going to do a. In print, I think I start picking this. There we go. So that's our cockpit shape there. Ah, right, I need to do this. Let's do this. So I'm going to drag this over here because I want this merged object to have a material idea. So let's just drag that over there, and go to our line, uh, and instead of extrude, we're going to add modifier, so we're in the modifier stack of the added object, and we're assigning this material ID 4, where's it gone? Eh, didn't work. That was kind of hopeful. Doesn't matter. Do it properly. Uh, so let's just inset this a bit. Uh, do I want to do that yet? Inset bevel. Oh, I missed a bit there. That looks weird. Oh, it's broken. Right. I'm not going to mess around with topology just yet, so let's just set the ID. And then we'll leave it there, because it's really just more about that shape and seeing what it looks like when I render it than it is about doing lots of modeling and it's a mistake that I keep getting sucked into is detailing when I should be looking at my silhouette. So let's look at the silhouette. That's kind of there. Uh, I guess that, and see now I could pull an experiment with just changing that profile by going back to my operands. Here's my vertexes, show the results on. This, I have to say, this technique works a shitload better in Blender than it does in Max. Which is a little bit annoying when you spend a truckload of money on our piece of software and the free software is outdoing you. Just gonna say that. I mean, Blender isn't better at everything, but it's getting better by the year. Because when you do this in Blender, it sort of does a load of stuff for you that. Um, We'll select everything. So I haven't tried this before, this technique. I saw it in a Blender tutorial actually, and um, I thought it was really neat. But uh, I think I'd have to refine this a bit more before I do it. 
in Max. So I really like the idea of just cutting shapes in and not really bothering te with textures. PQ, because uh, texturing is really tiny to me. And it sort of takes you out of your world a bit. Right, so let's um, set that ID to 4. See where we are. That's probably a bit over there, but we won't see it. So I think we can say that's done in terms of like our demo. Got some interesting shapes. The main form is there, and the rest of it is detailing. So I think maybe we'll leave it there and I'll carry on because I do quite like the shape and um, let's just quickly do a quick render properly maybe from there right so that I think that's a good prototype and probably the thing I should do now is like actually take it into um, like Photoshop or rather Affinity and just like paint over it and generate some more ideas. But I think that's quite good for an hour. Um, so um, I'm going to leave it there. One polygon, yeah, I, I know. I just figured that you won't see it from this camera angle. It's, it's like a, it's a discipline for myself to not worry about things like that. But yes, you're right. I missed the polygon. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. And I think, yeah, definitely we'll, we'll try and do some p texturing next week. So, which is going to be painful for me because I really want to do more on it now. But I, I'll stop. I promise to stop and I'll not do anything else other than maybe just hose a few workflows. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for joining in. Uh, I'll just post a link to my... Um, Discord once more so that you guys can so come and say hello. So I'm Kenzor and cheers, dude. Cheers, guys. Come find me on Discord. I'm Kenzor. And uh, hopefully speak to you soon. Bye. Did that work? Just checking. Let's just quickly do this. in Affinity. Right, let's do it like this. No, 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 let's do it in Max because it would be funny. This is the Discord link. Text Plus. But it's also in the chat. Cool, guys. See you soon.